All right, we are back. And now we are going to start setting up a project in RS Logics 5000. So let me get this up and I'm going to walk you through what you need to do to set a project up, not just for running on emulation, but also for, you know, running on a real PLC. So let's take some time and really see how to do this. When I open it up, we come up to this start page and I'm just going to go ahead and select a new project. If we wanted to run on the emulator, we just leave it like I've got it right here. When I go under type, I've got RS Logics Emulate 5000 controller. If I just select that and hit OK, I'm good. But let's pretend I actually wanted to run this thing on something else. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a compact logic controller. And I'm going to take revision 20 or 21, whichever, you know, you happen to have. It doesn't really matter. And then I need to give it a name. So we're going to call this PROJ1. That's, you know, something nice and simple. And instead of creating this in an RS Logics Projects folder, I'm just going to go ahead and put that on my desktop. So let's hit OK and get into our environment. Now it's got us a project created. When I come over here on the left, you can see I've got my controller and you see this zero right here in the brackets. That's telling us what slot it's in. Well, on a real project, we're probably, and when I say probably, I mean 99% of the time, we're not just going to be using a PLC all by itself we're going to have to have some I.O. modules to connect some things to it. So let's go ahead and right click over here on this bus and select new module. And here's a list of all the different modules compatible with the processor that we've selected. So in this case, I'm just going to put some generic things in here. I'm going to put this right here has an eight point input and a four point output. That sounds useful. Let's just go ahead and create one of those. And I'm going to put that on the next available slot, slot 1. So I'll hit OK. I could give that a name, but I really just wasn't in the mood at the moment. And let's also go ahead and take an analog input. Here's a 4 channel right here. I'll create that. Hit OK. That's going into slot 2. And then let's also go ahead and give ourselves some outputs. So I'll take this 16 point digital right here. I'll create that and I'll go ahead and put that on slot three. And then let's come down here and let's take this OF, eh, let's take this OF4, four channels of analog output. And I'll create that there. And let's go ahead and close out of that menu. Now you can see over here, I've got my whole rack set up. I've got my processor. And then I've got four I.O. modules downstream of that. Well, these digital modules, there's really not much to configure in a digital module. I mean, you know, there is a little bit when it's talking about scan time and things like that. But there's usually you just use those right out of the box and they're good. But our analogs will actually give us the options for one thing. On 5000, analog modules are not enabled by default. So you have to come in here and assuming we're going to use all four of these channels, we want to enable all of those channels. Now, what kind of signal is coming into this module? Well, different modules have different options based on their physical capabilities. This one actually appears to be able to handle all kinds of different signals. So let's go ahead and just say that we're going to use a 4 to 20 signal on that channel and maybe a 0 to 10 volt on this channel and maybe those are the only two channels we want to use. So we'll just leave those others disabled. Then what kind of data format do we want? We can have engineering units, we can have raw proportional. I always like scaled for PID. That's just my personal favorite. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because it's just practical if you're actually using PIDs, you're already scaled that way. So hit apply, hit OK, and now we know if we map to those first two input channels on this module, 
we're going to be getting within our program a 0 to 16383 value to work with and scale from there. So that's how you set up these modules and different modules have different configurations. Certainly we're not going to go through the list because we're here to learn how to program, not really learn about all the different modules in Alan Bradley's catalog. So that's the basics of how to configure your rack. Now, what else can we do in here when we're setting up our program? Well, something else I'll show you. This really isn't critical for us, but if we double click on our controller, you can see right here we've got time and date settings. So once we're actually hooked up to the running PLC, this is where we can go in there and set the time. We also have network, port configurations, internet protocol. This is important, assuming you're going to be running on Ethernet and have that kind of network functionality, you're going to want to know where to come to set the IP address. Also, whenever you have faults, if anything goes wrong within your program or your processor, you can come in here and actually see those things. You can clear them out. So double clicking on the processor over here in your Project Explorer brings up a lot of useful configuration and a lot of useful information on your processor. Now, let's get back into what we're actually here for, and that is our program. We've got right over here under tasks, main tasks, we've got our main program. And when I double click this main routine, it's a ladder diagram and it has nothing in it. So this is the skeleton. This is the, the bare bones version of what's going to turn into our program. And certainly we could come in here and we could write an entire PLC program right here in this main routine and we'd be done. But it's practical that we're actually going to want to have multiple ladders and possibly some other programming paradigms coming into play. So if I come back over here to this main program, I can right click and select a new routine. And maybe I don't want a ladder, maybe I actually want a sequential function chart. So I'll go ahead and take that and I'll just call it FSC1 for the time being. Hit OK. I'll come back and create another new module. So instead of a sequential function chart, I'll take a function block diagram, and I'll just call that FBD1. Hit OK. And so now I've actually got a couple of different things over here under my program. And I can create SFCs and FBDs. On top of that, the one thing you need to know about is where to find your data. Whenever you've created all of these tags that are going to be going into your programs, if you come over here and double click on controller tags, you'll see everything that you've created within the controller scope. And from this browser window, you can also get into programs, click into main program, and you can look at the tags for the main program as well. You've got two different tags on the bottom one for just monitoring the tags. This doesn't allow you to change them, but you can change the values. So the value that's in white, you can change that real time while it's running. But what you can't do is come over here and rename this tag. If you want to do that, you just need to click on this Edit Tags tab down here, and that brings you to exactly the opposite. You can't monitor what's actually being stored in any of those tags. You can't change the value real time, but you can see all the different properties associated with this tag, and you can change pretty much anything. So that's the Tag Explorer. That's how you get into it. And at this point, the only other thing that you'll ever really need to know about setting up a project and getting it online is, of course, the communications. And if you go to Who Active, that's going to interface with RS links and show you what processors you have connected to your system on whatever drivers you have installed. So for us, when the time comes, we are going to be connecting this up to emulate, and that's this ABVBP driver, which is the virtual device driver for RS links. That's going to have one emulator down here when we're running 5000. 
you're not going to have this software. You're not going to be able to do that in most cases, but if you ever get your hands on it, I do want you to see this, know where it is, know how to get into it. And certainly if you're actually running a real processor, it might be up here under Ethernet IP driver. You would see that, select it. You could come down here and click set the project path to map this project to that device on your network. And then you would just come up here and click download to send the program from your programming environment into the PLC. So that's really it. That's what you need to know about setting up a project in RS Logics 5000.